pack rust corrosion identification and mitigation strategies for steel bridges lecture by dr g subramanian chief scientist retired csir central electrochemical research institute the total number of bridges in united states is approximately about 5.83 lakhs of which 2 lakhs are steel 2.35 lakhs are conventional reinforced concrete bridges and 1.08 lakhs are pre-stressed concrete bridges and the remaining are made up of other construction materials corrosion is the reason for approximately 15% of the structurally deficient bridges the estimated annual direct cost is about 8.3 billion us dollars the figure above shows a further breakdown of the cost of corrosion in highway bridges the majority of the cost about 3.8 billion us dollars is due to the replacement of structurally deficient bridges maintenance and capital cost for concrete bridge decks and concrete substructures or the other two segments where a total of 4 billion us dollars is the cost of corrosion the least amount spent of the categories identified for maintenance painting of steel bridges painting is an important task because it helps in extending the life of structure by preventing it from developing corrosion the total cost estimated does not include additional user costs due to the traffic delays long detours that added to more fuel consumption and wear and tear of vehicles the pack rust corrosion identification and mitigation strategies for steel bridges in usa has been done between the year 2013 and 2017 by Joint Transportation Research Program Hall for Discovery and Learning Research shortly called as DLR West Lafayette Indiana sponsoring agency is Indiana Department of Transportation Indiana Police Indiana and conducted in cooperation with the United States Department of Transportation Federal Highway Administration The forms of corrosion has been nearly about 16 types. The packers corrosion comes under the group 1 that is readily identifiable by ordinary visual examination. Generally, when an academic or research institution organizes a course on corrosion either on fundamentals, basics fundamentals with mechanisms, paints and coatings, cathodic protection, pipeline industry, oil and pipeline industry corrosion, etc 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 for 5 days naturally forms of corrosion will be one of the lectures in the syllabus the lecturer would be given a time frame of 30 to 40 minutes to finish this task in that talk the lecturer would be briefing about pack rust corrosion for one or two minutes whereas i have briefed it for 27 minutes in this lecture for the benefits of students budding scientists engineers and industry personnel Pack rust corrosion is a form of localized corrosion typical of steel components that develop a crevice into an open atmospheric environment this expression is often used in relation to bridge inspection to describe built up members of steel bridges which are showing signs of rust packing between steel plates the figure on the right side shows you an example of pack rust corrosion in a steel bridge corrosion is a major problem in the infrastructure industry costing millions of dollars every year for maintenance repair or replacement by improving the coating systems and frequency of application surface corrosion can be effectively controlled however Very few studies have been conducted to study the influence of pack rust on steel bridges. 
when steel elements of a member are unprotected and in contact with another metal or even non metal the steel usually begins to corrode and rust starts to develop or pack in between the surfaces pack rust is not visible until the rust product starts deforming the adjoining members and elements it can cause overstressing of bolts and rivets and unchecked rust growth may result in bolt and rivet failure this will reduce the effective capacity of the connection or might even cause its failure the mianas river bridge collapse is an example of the failure of a connection due in part to pack rust formation the average age of the existing steel bridges in india now is currently about 50 years and with the continued aging of the bridge infrastructure the problem of pack rust is most likely going to increase without proactive intervention in 2012 indiana department of transportation included stripe coating in its painting specifications to mitigate pack rust in new structures the study collected quantitative data on occurrence of pack rust on steel bridges in the state of indiana and reviewed mitigation strategies used by other department of transportations when significant development of pack rust occurs it can bend connecting plates and member elements thus reducing their bulk buckling capacity thus it is important to mitigate the formation and growth of pack rust in bridges the study was conducted to determine if pack rust occurs frequently and thereby may pose a problem in the state of indiana the study is divided into three primary tasks the first part of the study involves understanding the parameters involved in the initiation process of crevice corrosion or post to initiate to crevice corrosion process the second part of the study involves reviewing existing mitigation strategies and repair procedures used by state department of transportations the third part of the study involves identifying steel bridges with pack rust in indiana analysis were performed on the data collected from indiana bridges that have pack rust this involve finding the components and members of bridges which are most affected by pack rust and finding parameters which influence the formation of pack rust pack rust in steel bridges were identified using indiana department of transportation inspection reports available through bridge inspection and application system the study revealed that good maintenance practices helped in reducing pack rust formation the study identified locations on steel bridges which have a high probability towards pack rust formation a mitigating strategy possessing qualities which can show promising results is identified findings of this study pack rust was found to occur frequently in indiana about one third of the state one steel bridges exhibit some form of pack rust the member element most commonly affected in terms of numbers is rocker bearings that is 318 out of 982 bridges showed evidence of pack rust in the rocker bearings the second member element to frequently exhibit pack rust is a bolted or riveted splice connection 214 of 1611 bridges were observed to have developed pack rust in a beam or girder splice connection the members with the highest percentage of pack rust occurrence are gusset plates and hinge pin connections pack rust occurred in both of these components in more than 90% of the bridges with such details n diaphragms cross bracings and beam cover plates 
were also found to be susceptible however the frequency of packrust occurrence in these members is less than 10 percentage the figure on the left top gives you the view of typical camera angle for photos of n diaphragms you can see the red markle elliptical circles 1 2 3 gives you packrust corrosion in n diaphragms whereas on the figure on the right side bottom gives you most severe packrust in the diaphragm found in indiana bridge steel bridges you can see the elliptical red circle n mark gives you the deformation owing to packrust corrosion the figure on the left side top gives you the rivet fail due to packrust the elliptical red circle encircled by a red circle color gives you the packrust deformation experience due to packrust in the rivet failure whereas on the contrary the figure on the right side right bottom side gives you the overview of packrust in the lower cord and gusset plate point number 1 location 1 2 3 pointed by red arrows encircled by elliptical red circles the figure on the left top side gives you packrust in connections of the bottom cord the top left side the left side one gives you the view going to deformation going to packrust and that as on year 2013 whereas the same figure on the right hand side gives you the photograph taken during 2017 you can see here the packrust in connections with the bottom cord on the contrary the figure at the bottom side right side gives you the packrust at the tapet location for wider cover plates encircled by elliptical red colors which gives you the clear picture about packrust deformation corrosion the figure on the top left side gives you unwelded portion at the end of the cover plate you can see corrosion packrust corrosion on the unwell portion pointed out by red arrows unwelded portion whereas in welded portion there is not much packrus corrosion on the contrary figure on the right top side gives you packrus at the end of the cover plates bent cover plates you can see here and whereas the figure at the bottom left side gives you non continuous welds between the cover plate and bottom flange you can see the deformation due to packrus corrosion highlighted by elliptical red circle red colored circle Uh, circles the figure on the top left side gives you example of packrust in cross brazing encircled by a red colored circle whereas on the contrary the figure on the right side gives you angle connection failed due to packrust the top one you can see failed welded connection and the bottom one fallen angle sections going to packrust deformation corrosion the figure implicitly clearly shows the finger joint in a highway bridge this figure packrust in the hinge pin connections you can see the top side depth deck joint you can see the packrust corrosion severity highlighted by red arrows the bottom side you can see left bottom left side pack rust highlighted by red arrow whereas the right side gives you hinge plate displacement displaces deformation due to pack rust the figure shows you the pack rust in the middle of the splice plate at location 1 you can see on the left side tension in bolts pointed out by red arrows whereas the deformation owing to packrust corrosion has been highlighted on the middle this figure clearly shows the packrust in the corners of the splice splice plate 
at location 2, you can see the defamation experience owing to Packer's corrosion. This figure clearly shows you the Packer's in the edges of the splicers at location 3. So there is the deformation can be easily visualized owing to pack crust. Here the figure on the left side shows you the pack crust in the rocker bearings, severe corrosion owing to pack crust deformation. On the contrary, the figure on the right it gives you pack crust in elastomeric bearings. Findings of this study. The percentage of observed pack rust occurrence for each district was tabulated. Occurrence in the Greenfield and Laporte district is the least among the six districts in Indiana. The Laporte district which experiences the highest amount of annual snowfall and also has the highest salt and brine usage in the state has a pack rust occurrence of 24 percentages which is less than half of that observed in the Fort Wayne district. There are multiple possible reasons for this observation. One factor that may play a large role is Laporte maintenance crews annually wash the decks and bearings of every bridge using water jets to remove dirt, debris and salts. The occurrence of pack crust in girder and beam splices of bridges that intersect a water body is higher than that of the bridges that intersect roads and railroads. The percentage of bridges with pack crust in splice of exterior beams is higher than that of bridges with pack crust in the splice of interior beams. The study found that it takes 12 years on an average after painting a bridge that is re-coating for crevice corrosion to start in the gap between the members and the splice plates to exhibit visible rust bleeding from the splices. The use of spot painting or recoating at a frequency of less than 12 years may help to minimize pack rust formation. From the point of initiation, it would then, it would then take an additional 20 years to reach a very severe pack rust corrosion. The figure on the top left side gives you number of bridges with the pack rust in splices. Rating with rating 1, 5 bridges, percentage is 3 percentage. The rating 2, 20 bridges, percentage is 11 percentage. The rating 3, number of bridges is 59 bridges with 33 percentage. The rating 4, 60 bridges with 34 percentages. With the rating 5, 33 bridges with 19 percentage. Figure on the bottom right side gives you location of splices that have pack rust. Exterior inside, 7 bridges only 4 percentage. Interior, 2 bridges only 1 percentage. Several bridges, several locations. In 66 bridges, about 37 percentages. Exterior in 1 or 2 bridges, about 58 percentages. Table 1 highlights. Detailed list of states with the mitigation strategy and specific details regarding them. List which states specify caulking and their respective size limits as to when caulking can be used. It lists the states which specify stripe coating and the order of application of stripe coat with the painting system used in its state. It also specifies whether the mitigation strategy is for new bridges or for existing bridges. So notations used in this table. PC stands for primer coat. SPC stands for stripe coat of primer coat. IC stands for intermediate coat. SIC stands for stripe coat of intermediate coat. And FC stands for finish coat. And SFC stands for stripe coat of finish coat. And there are about one, eight columns in this table. First one represents states and the condition of chalking, size of caulking, penetrating sealer, stripe coat, stripe coat sequence, new or existing coating, and comments. You can see here in CA state, size of chalking is about greater than 0 0.006 inches. 
and the condition is existing coating commands different painting sequence for spot blast cleaning and for paint completely removed cock sequence ambiguous next of d state it is less than or equal to half inch size of cock stripe coat sequence is primer coat and stripe coat primer coat condition is new 100% solid rust penetrating sealer for less than or equal to half inch caulking because of il state sequence of stripe coat is primer finish coat and finish coat the condition is new new coating commands penetrating sealers used for spot painting the case of ia state the cock caulking range uh, it's about size it's about greater than 3 by 16 inch sequence of stripe coat is stripe coat primer coat and primer coat the condition of the coating is new as well as existing cracks and seams less than 3 by 16 inch if not effectively sealed by prime coat caulking is required because of mn state you can see the sequence of stripe coat is stripe coat primer coat and primer coat and the comments is a national survey report recommends epoxy penetrating sealer epoxy mastic polyurethane finish for pack rust regions and because of mo state existing coating calcium sulfonate rust penetrating sealer in the case of ny state sequence of uh, stripe coat is intermediate coat and stripe coat intermediate coat epoxy penetrating sealer in case of or state the size of caulking greater than 1 by 4 inch sequence of uh, stripe coat is spc pc sic ic and fc coating is new as well as existing packers removal practice also mentioned caulking over baking material because of tn state it is a new coating system before painting use silicone caulk to seal the top of the splices of webs in girders without cover plates what is caulking a waterproof filler and sealant used in building work and repairs use silicone caulk to ensure that you have an all season moisture seal table 2 gives breakdown of the number of bridges that intersect particular feature in district fort wayne with pack rust or water is 34 or road is 65 or railroad 25 and abandoned railroad 3 total 56 for water for road bridge 121 for railroad it is 36 abandoned railroad 5 percentage for water it is 61 for road it is 54 and railroad it is 69 and abandoned railroad it is 60 that is of indiano at the bottom you can see with pack rust it is about 232 for water and 300 for road and 88 for railroad and 20 for abandoned railroad total it is about 610 for water 988 for road and 299 for railroad and 44 for abandoned railroad percentage 38 for water 30 for road 29 for railroad and 45 for abandoned railroad table 3 explains number of bridges with the pack rust in splice connections over given intersecting feature that is water road railroad abandoned railroad for fort wayne district it is with pack rust the water is 11 road it is 9 railroad it is 4 abandoned railroad it is 0 total number of bridges for water 53 for road 121 railroad 36 abandoned railroad 5 percentage is 21 for water 16 for road 11 for railroad and 0 for 
abandoned railroad because of india now we can see the bottom with pack rust 107 for water 104 for road 22 for railroad 5 for abandoned railroad total number of bridges 607 for water 988 for road 299 for railroad and 44 for abandoned railroad percentage for water is 18 percentage 11 for road and 7 for railroad and 11 for abandoned railroad findings with the help of images present in inspection reports it was observed that the edge distance and the initial pretension in the bowls play a major role in preventing pack rust in, in splice connections and other connections stripe coating as a pack rust mitigating strategy is the most popular technique utilized with 24 states department of transportation recommending it in their painting specifications 13 states recommended coking and 8 states recommended the use of penetrating sealers Oregon is the only state of department of transportation that outlined a method to repair members affected by pack rust Experimental studies showed that stripe coating coated connections with the bottom crevice uncocked experience the least amount of corrosion and minimum pit depth for new structures A second series of specimens involved in involved plates that were corroded, cleaned, assembled, and then stripe coated, caulked. Caulk placed on all sides was found to produce the best results. Implementation: the use of small edge distances with properly tightened high strength bolts will keep material in firm contact. and minimize crevice openings the use of bolt stagger in new splice connection should be avoided current indiana department of transportation provisions for stripe coating of new structures should be retained further study should be done to investigate the effectiveness of stripe coating and the need to modify the number of stripe coats utilized Pack rust formation can be minimized in splice plate details where no pack rust has been detected. If the connection region is cleaned and stripe coat is applied along the crevice at a frequency of no more than 12 years, the opening between the flanges can be sealed with a suitable filler material to prevent moisture entry. If rust bleeding is observed in splice connections, Use of an alkaline alkaline penetrating sealer appears to be the best option. If caulk is used to seal crevices, rust, debris and soils should be removed and the surface cleaned before caulking the crevices. Otherwise they should not be caulked. Caulking an effective crevice corrosion cell will likely accelerate the corrosion process. penetrating sealers that are alkaline and have the appropriate viscosity to penetrate into crevices show promising results in mitigating pack rust the crevice should be cleaned by mechanical tools or high pressure water jets before applying penetrating sealers further study of these sealers should be considered to establish whether they should be used regularly in indiana Pressurized water jet washing appears to be an effective maintenance practice that reduces the chances of pack rust occurrence in bearings.